Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting for Tuesday, January 9th, the year 2001. And the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Um, moving on, the next item on the agenda is adjustments. Seeing none, um, we'll move on to approval of the December school board minutes that were in your packet. Any revisions? Um, and moving right along then to comments from our high school representatives. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Um, Sarah couldn't make it tonight. She's at a girls' basketball game. Um, and to start with the sports, the boys and girls' basketball teams are both playing Greeley tonight. Um, there's a Nordic race tomorrow at Twin Brook in Greeley. Um, the indoor track team had a meet Friday night in um, Gorham. And the hockey team has a game coming up this weekend. Um, today, the um, first meeting was held for the senior transition project that it began with everyone just getting um, ideas about the project and um, initial proposals will be due on February 16th. Um, work has also begun on Alice in Wonderland and that will be the winter play um, this year. Seven students recently attended the Allstate Jazz Festival up in Fort Kent and the SAC will be meeting this Thursday. So we haven't met in about a week and a half, so we'll have some new agenda on that next um, meeting. On February 9th, there will be a Valentine's Day dance hosted by the junior class. And beginning last week, um, the police were present in the school, and from what I've heard, that was pretty well accepted by all the students. So that's about it for this month. Any questions? Any questions? What time is the SAC meeting? Um, you know? I believe it's period F. I don't know exactly what time it is on that day. Sorry. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, comments um, from our middle school representative? Um, good evening. Derek sends his apologies that he wasn't able to make it tonight. Um, starting with sports, the um, seventh and eighth grade girls basketball team played their last game tonight and the 7th um, and 8th grade boys team um, will be starting soon, um, basketball team. The 8th grade advisories will be meeting with the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust soon. Um, progress reports are coming out January 26th. Also, the 5th and 6th grade roller skating socials are coming up on the 16th and 17th of January. The 7th and 8th graders will be having a dance, um, the Valentine dance, on the 9th of February. And we are currently in the process of creating a dress code for the dances due to some concern in the past dances. Um, we have a career fair coming up on January 25th and a variety show on February 6th. And also Mrs. Bisbee's language arts classes have completed a mural um, commemorating Martin Luther King um, as part of their study on the Watson's Go to Birmingham novel. Any questions? Looks like none, thank you very much, good Thanks. job. Move on to communications, um, the notification of m municipal elections. It says there is a notice in your packet for those of you who um, does affect on the timelines and deadlines for that. Um, okay. Any any comments on this? A, yeah. I don't know. I've got a separate communication, George. Oh, okay. Um, nothing on the municipal elections. Um, Kevin. Just as a reminder, uh, the high school rep brought up the STP, the middle school rep brought up the uh, Outdoor Experience Committee meeting with uh, Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. Uh, there are all funds available through the Cape Community Coalition. 
uh, through many grants to assist in those projects which uh, promote the asset building model that the coalition is trying to promote. If anyone has any questions about that, feel free to contact me uh, directly at any time between now and when your project begins. And if there's anything we can do to assist, we will. Okay, thank you. Um, George? Yes. I had one more communication. Mm -hmm. uh, you may remember at the last meeting I uh, recorded on a letter that I proposed to send to our new slate of legislators in Augusta identifying areas where they could be helpful to our school system and, and our town. Um, I did mail those letters and received an immediate response from uh, Congresswoman uh, Janet McLaughlin. Uh, if, you, if you'd indulge me, I, sure. it's, it's a very short uh, letter, uh, dated December 14, 2000. I'd like to submit a bill. To cut, this is a letter to the uh, leadership in the legislature in Augusta. I'd like to submit a bill to cover the following problem. During the last school year, our school department found itself responsible for providing an education for a young man who had been indicted for a violent crime. Absent clear guidelines for the department's responsibilities in such a situation, uh, it struggled with a fair and safe solution for all. Proposed solution, to develop guidelines for school departments to follow when providing public education to those convicted of felonies or violent crimes and for those under indictment for those crimes but awaiting trial. Um, so she has uh, jumped right on top of that. Um, we all received uh, copies also from Janet McLaughlin of a, a, a uh, communication uh, informing us about the legislative updates that are available to us and also informing us that she has been named to the uh, Legislative Committee on Taxation in Augusta, which will be of uh, uh, pretty uh, significant interest, I think, to our schools and to our community. Thanks, Jim. Other um, communications? I'm going to move on to uh, comments from the public. Are there any intended? See. No. Um, and next, we uh, have some recognition that we'd like to do. And I'd like to call uh, Peter Dawson to assist uh, George and I at the, at the podium. It's our pleasure this evening to, to be able to recognize some students who have earned a recognition in the National Merit Scholarship Program. Last year, um, we uh, had the good fortune to recognize several students from the high school um, regarding the National Merit uh, Program. And I think this is something that, um, you know, that really puts us apart from a lot of schools and the number of, of students over the years that have been recognized in Cape Elizabeth through the National Merit Program. It's, it's the very top of, of the students in, in taking the PSAT and those, those who scored at the very top of, their, top of their class. And we're very fortunate that we seem to always have a significant number of students. Um, I'd like to call on Peter to explain a little <coughs> bit to everyone what this means in the percentages in the top 2% or 1%, which I have forgotten since my days as a principal. The, as uh, Dr. Priscilla mentioned, the National Merit uh, Program is based on the uh, preliminary scholastic aptitude test. Uh, taken as juniors. A lot of our students take uh, these tests as sophomores, but uh, their junior scores are the ones that are uh, used. Uh, the uh, National Merit Corporation has uh, devised a formula for figuring a what they call a selection index, uh, and that selection index is basically based on two times the verbal score plus the math score. Um, if you are in the top 5%, uh, you can be a commended student and in the top 2% a uh, national merit semifinalist. We will hear later uh, uh, those that are national merit semifinalists have uh, completed materials at this point, sent them back into the National Merit Scholarship Corporation and this could lead <coughs> to uh, the uh, actual awarding of scholarship monies depending upon universities uh, to which a student is applying, uh, various corporations that sponsor uh, different students, and so forth. Uh, but the, uh, the 
academic honor of it is, is this point right now where they're being recognized for truly outstanding performance uh, in the preliminary scholastic aptitude test. Stay up, I'll read the names. Okay. We've got several that are at work uh, tonight, or at least a couple that are at work tonight. So those of you that were able to come, and congratulations once again. It's a certificate of recognition uh, presented to, and I'll read through the, the first one and then call, call the names. Um, Caitlin Wendell, this certificate is presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board in recognition of outstanding academic achievement as a National Merit Scholarship Program commended student. Erica Lopez. I think the rest are here. Well, I'll get those out of the way. Pat Kelsey, a commended student. Nell Bridger, commended. <clears throat> Megan Donovan, commended. <clears throat> Andrew Clough, semifinalist. Elizabeth Geyer, semifinalist. <laughs> and Katie Dana, semifinalist. <laughs> I think that's it. Thank you all very much for coming. Uh, next on our agenda is the superintendent's report, uh, and the first item there is the update on the future direction action teams. The future direction action teams are um, continuing to meet, and tomorrow during the early release time, um, the action teams will be meeting, and they are, um, hopefully their, their goal is to complete the draft of their, their objectives and, and place them in to a cycle in the five-year plan. Um, so those action plans are moving, moving ahead. I've had the opportunity to meet individually um, with the action team leaders. And so far, it looks like we're on schedule. And by the end of this year, we will have um, our five-year plan with the, with the specific action uh, plans. Um, what will happen at the, at the conclusion of their work and as they have created those action plans, the future direction planning team will meet again as a group they will examine all of the action plans and the objectives and uh, place them into the five-year cycle. Um, one particular action team, for instance, may have um, two or three or four plans they'd like to see in year one. Um, they're not necessarily aware that another team may have four or five for that schedule for that year, so the future directions planning group is to take all of those plans and fit them into to some sort of a five-year cycle. Um, but there's uh, some exciting plans, and I think some, some great things are going to come out of this. But it does help us create a focus, and it's, it seems like it will come to fruition soon. The next item that I have um, is just a quick update on the um, Education Foundation. As you are aware, um, this is a small group that is looking at alternative sources um, for funding. And, and by creating an Education Foundation, um, this may be something that will, although functioning outside of, of the school district, um, will closely tie into the goals of the school district. Um, their plan right now is to, after they have created a pretty clear mission and statement of purpose, 
they will be bringing that to the school board. Um, as of right now, the time schedule is to have them come in February. Uh, they would present their mission, um, and their hope is to get support from the school board so that they don't want to pursue and go out and seek funding and without the approval of the school board. So once they have that clear mission and statement of purpose, they will be bringing that to you uh, for your approval. And right now, the timeline is that they'll have that for the February meeting. Um, we'll move on to the principal's reports and start with uh, Pete at the high school. It's going to be hard to adjust to the new orientation. Uh, a moment ago, we were in the recognition mode, and I, I think I'd, I'd like to start tonight's report with just a brief continuation. Um, two of our students have just had artwork selected through the Scholastic Art Competition, <coughs> sponsored by the Maine College of Art, uh, but uh, a nationwide program um, for inclusion in the uh, latest gallery show at the um, uh, at the Maine College of Art. Brian Shavodny Shoquist uh, had a piece of his photography, photography selected as a silver key uh, recipient, uh, and, and then consequently inclusion in the show. And Stephanie Reed uh, has been recognized with a gold key, which allows her to go on, her work to go on to the national competition also. Uh, we've been recognizing uh, that in school. They will be recognized on September, uh, January 20th uh, at the uh, reception at the Maine College of Art, uh, and their work will be on display in the gallery there until that time. Uh, so this is a, uh, there were approximately, uh, I would say, about 12 uh, Gold Key Awards uh, for the whole state, and Stephanie uh, received one of those. So I think it was uh, great achievement. Richard Roethlisberger uh, is their teacher in both cases. Um, I might add, if you have a chance to be over in the high school, uh, Richard just put up a, a, a small display in the display case uh, in the uh, first floor lobby uh, that is striking, I believe. Uh, I, I, I was just amazed with the work that our students are doing. The alumni surveys are coming back in, and, and we're pleased. I've been told uh, from people uh, in the survey uh, business that if you, if in a, in a, uh, a voluntary survey like this where the, uh, the respondents did not necessarily have anything to gain from it, that if you hit 30 percent, uh, you're not doing too badly. Um, we're a little over 50 percent now, and, and uh, through uh, follow-up phone calls, we're very hopeful that we will hit the between 60 and 70 percent. Uh, we've received about, uh, we're hoping to have about 100 responses. We have about uh, 80 or so now. Um, and while uh, we haven't begun the analysis of those surveys, I can tell you that um, in, in, I took them home last night just to look through to see if there were any uh, obvious themes. And one that I was particularly interested in was the question regarding uh, did you feel that Cape Elizabeth High School or the Cape, I should, the Cape Elizabeth School Department prepared you uh, for your next step? Uh, in most cases, that is college. And... Um, I know that my anecdotal reports have always been to you that students always tell me when they come back for the weekends or vacations that we have, but I recognize that's a, there's a potential for a biased sample there. Um, but these surveys were um, overwhelmingly, I mean, it, it, um, I didn't stop to count, but I'm, I'm going to say that um, probably in the neighborhood of 90 percent, uh, 85 to 90 percent said either agree or, dis uh, agree or agree strongly to the statement that uh, Cape Elizabeth schools have prepared me well for success at this next level. And many of them took time to, to uh, write out comments, uh, and uh, many of their comments verified, uh, verified that. So I was very pleased with this preliminary look. We'll, we'll begin the analysis of it uh, uh, in a few days once we feel that we have everything that's coming in. Tomorrow we'll be using the early release time to follow up. As you remember, uh, we had Steve Wessler in for a program on uh, hate crimes and harassment, uh, full assembly. Uh, and now what we're doing tomorrow, what the faculty is doing tomorrow is 
uh, reacting. We, we completed surveys uh, within the House uh, regarding uh, general thoughts on, okay, what are the most important issues that, uh, uh, that came up in that assembly and in the follow-up roundtable discussions? What are the strategies that we can use to, uh, to hit those issues? Um, we, uh, the, the surveys have come in. They're very definite uh, commonalities. Uh, and um, so we will be spending that hour and a half uh, tomorrow uh, looking at that and, and, and seeing if we can come to consensus as to our next steps and, uh, and strategies for, for getting there. Uh, I think the reaction to that program has been very positive. <coughs> I might add that February 13th will be the second of the roundtable uh, discussions that will follow the model uh, that we used uh, back a month ago, a, month, a little bit more than a month ago. Um, and uh, they still will be student-led. Uh, we just had a second round of uh, training uh, today. Uh, the Belinda Snell and uh, Katie Lisa have uh, uh, planned to increase the number of students, uh, actually double the number of students that have been uh, trained, and, and uh, we're very pleased with, uh, with that. So February, I mentioned, yes, February 13th will be the, uh, the next uh, roundtable. Uh, semester exams for those that are at home. Uh, just a reminder that semester exams will take place next week, September. Uh, why do I have September in the mind? Uh, January 16th through the 19th. Uh, we will be following the traditional exam schedule with two two hour exam periods per day. Students will be coming, uh, only need to be there when they have uh, exams. Uh, and that will be over the four, uh, the four days, so the 16th through the the 19th, there will be buses that are offered for students uh, after the first set of exams and then after the second exam. The athletic schedule takes a break during that week. There will be no contests after Saturday of this week uh, until the following Friday. And as Kirsten mentioned in her earlier report, we had our first meeting with the seniors, a senior transition uh, project kickoff. Um, Following the advice of last year's seniors, last year's seniors uh, advised that we start the process a little bit earlier this year than we did uh, last year, and uh, uh, so we did uh, did do that. And we, as uh, uh, Kirsten mentioned, in early February, students will be starting to hand in their rough ideas of what they'd like to accomplish, and then we'll be helping them to focus on those places where they might be able to get that type of experience. The year's experience. Uh, is, we're finding already is tremendously helpful. We, we know what some of the uh, glitches are going to be. We have a catalog prepared already that, that Carol Robitelli and the guidance office has prepared of all of the placements that we had last year, how they worked out, uh, who the contact people are, what types of work was performed uh, in, in each, uh, uh, in each uh, organization. So this year seniors will uh, have some of uh, those uh, glitches ironed out for them and they'll be able to, I think, hit the ground running. We've already heard uh, several students uh, through the course of this first semester have been coming up and saying that they had great ideas and, and they've explained them briefly and they are exciting. They're, they're clearly uh, catching on that this is an opportunity to do something that's, uh, that's really uh, fun and enlightening. I think that's it. Questions for Pete? Um, I had uh, two questions, I think. The, um, the alumni survey results, will we, is that intended um, to be shared at, to the school board level or just within the, um, within the uh, leadership council level? Uh, I think it would be good to share with the, with the, at the school board level. That'd be great. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, you know, we've been talking uh, in the uh, action plan teams and everything. We've been trying to figure out what, what constitutes a report card and it seems to me that this would be one aspect of it. It's right. one that we've been talking about for a couple of years of getting uh, alumni uh, input and, and uh, so I, I would think that we would want to prepare a report for the board unless of course it's negative in which they said <laughs> okay um, good answer um, my second question is um, the senior uh, project it, it, it was fascinating last year it was the first time we tried it it was very exciting and I think uh, the seniors are probably excited about it this year how long exactly is it? Three weeks. It's a three weeks. Uh, I, uh, I believe it's, um, I believe the senior's last day of classes will be May the 11th. Uh, yes, May the, May the 11th. 
the project will start on May 14th and run until June uh, 4th, uh, actually 1st, I think. So it's, uh, let's see here, yes, three weeks, May 11th uh, through June uh, through June 1st. Mm -hmm. um, and then the presentations, uh, I think we have scheduled, I'd have to look uh, back at the timeline, but I think the presentations are scheduled <coughs> for June 4th. Uh, so yes, it's, it's three weeks. We are doing one thing uh, differently this year, while well, we're doing several, th several things differently, but one thing is that during that uh, time, I think May 22nd, is the uh, United Way Day of Caring, and we're going to have all of the class involved in that in some way uh, for that, that one day, and then you know, be involved in their other projects the rest of the time. That's great, thanks. Other questions? Thank you, Pete. Move on to um, the middle school, Nancy. Um, I, I think my question here, I'm not sure if it's a reflection of the fact that this is my 12th year as an administrator in Cape Elizabeth or that I'm a middle school principal, but I was wondering, is there a particular reason that we're faced this way? Because I've noticed everyone's turned this way, or could we just turn this? I, you, I think you could turn that. <laughs> <laughs> I just wondered. There, Thank you. As you can see, they've been painting in here, so maybe. Well, I, that's you. what I thought, Things and then I thought none around. of us have. It's all who you want to impress, Nancy. You want to impress them or us? <laughs> I, the budget's coming up. I fully intend to impress you at this particular time, <laughs> and take that opportunity. <laughs> I believed you, Tom. <laughs> Let's see. Um, First of all, as Christine mentioned, we do have a career fair coming up. I believe you have all received invitations um, to that. And if you could stop by for any moment of that time, if it works into your work schedule, um, please feel free to do that. Our students will be going to three different presentations. And they start at 8, and we run through until 9.30. The presentations run about 25 minutes. So even if you could just stop by for a little bit of time, if you come on the hour and half hour, you'll be able to get the start of presentations and float through. I want to thank very much um, Gail Schmader for helping us organize this. Without her, we wouldn't be able to do it. Also to thank Rick Madden, our seventh and eighth grade guidance counselor. He works very closely with Gail to make sure we have things lined up that we're covering careers that students are interested in. Rick also is doing a round of um, kickoff in the midst of and then follow up from our career awareness um, day with all the seventh and eighth grade students he does a four or five day presentation and we do that through the social studies classes and that's to support that and to <coughs> careers and then also to thank kate tebow who is the secretary in our guidance office for helping us she makes she puts all the things into the computer and makes it work so the students know where they're going to be going on those particular days so certainly thanks to all three of those people this is our i believe our fourth career fair um, they've been very successful and we certainly look forward to another successful adventure this year the day prior to that, on June 24th, some of the middle school teachers will be attending the Southern Maine Middle Level Conference, which we hosted last year. This year it's being hosted in Portland by the Lyman Moore Middle School, and we'll be going there from 3 to 8 p.m. to listen to and participate in a series of discussions around issues and concerns that confront middle schools. And it's called about when good people disagree. We hope to have some differing opinions and just share some ideas and learn lots about what other schools are doing and how they handle specific situations that are identified with middle schools. I think Christine also did a very good job um, letting you know about the variety show. We have that coming up. If you wanted to submit an act from the school board, we have time for that. Um, we could do that. And also we are underway. This is audition week for the Music Man, and every time I see Steve Price, I sing a rendition of 76 trombones. I won't entertain it, you with it tonight, because Steve keeps saying, that's okay, Nancy, I think you can do programs again this year, so <laughs> I think I've passed my audition as best I can. And other than that, we just continue to have fun and learn every day in the middle school, so that's it. But any questions? That's great. Questions for Nancy? Looks like none. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. And uh, moving on to Pond Cove, Tom. 
Good evening. Just a, a few items to bring to your attention tonight. The first is, thanks to the continuing efforts of Gary Lenoy and Ren Wilkinson, we've moved to the next stage to go electronic with our report cards. Gary, with uh, the advice of Ren and with technical help that he contracted for, has managed to tap a database so that teachers can sit down at computers and call up the, um, the data they need. For this um, first time we try it, we've been completely <coughs> electronic. It doesn't work quite 100%, uh, so some teachers will still be doing a hard copy since we can't do it from home. But that's a lot of progress in one year. I'm really pleased with that. Um, let's see. Tomorrow, uh, Pete and Nancy mentioned, we have another of our early release days. We're going to continue our literacy inquiry. Uh, the timing for our work this year has been just terrific. We have been using uh, a teacher text and professional material for grades K through 2 for a number of years, and it's hoped to, helped us develop the common language and common understanding for instruction and assessment in reading and writing in those grades. For years, these authors have been promising to go to the next level and they finally have. I think we have the first uh, 25 copies off the presses, so we'll be focusing more on reading and writing for grades three and four. And I think by the end of this year, I'll have good news to report about coordination and uh, focus uh, right on through. It's, it, we've really had a good time with this. Um, Ren Wilkinson, again, likes the book so much that he is organizing an optional study group uh, once a month to go through this book um, chapter by chapter. We were going to do just grade three, but other teachers have expressed an interest. So that's really pleasing to hear. This week, the looping teachers are going to meet again. We've been meeting regularly just to share experiences. And we're ready now to look at ways of developing a simple but I hope effective instrument to evaluate looping from the points of view of the teachers, the students, and the parents. Um, that should go out this spring. Um, I don't know if you know what the work, the good work the Playground Committee is doing in light of the facilities work. I thought I'd just give you a quick update. With funding from the town, we've been able to <coughs> hire Pat Carroll, uh, a Cape Elizabeth resident, to a landscape architect. And in a very short time, uh, Pat has taken all the work that the committee has done and summarized it and has come up with concept designs for the committee to look at, uh, specifically in terms of plans for the Pond Cove site and the middle school site. Uh, his next job will be develop, to develop something similar for Fort William. So um, that's been a terrific project. We're making uh, headway enough for me to look kids in the eye again at Pond Cove and say, I think we're going to get something done this fall. Sarah Berman and I, speaking of that, meet regularly with, uh, we've been continuing to meet regularly with representatives from the fourth grade classes. And it's, if it's not the lunchroom or bus, they're always talking about the playground. So we hope to get a Pat or a representative to come and meet with the grade four students who will represent not only um, the Ponco point of view, but have a vested interest in talking about the middle skills, school plans too. But their big topic these days is snow forts, who puts them up, who takes them down, how, how can they be, where can they be moved, it's uh, fun to listen to them. Also we had two winners in the predict the first snow day contest, uh, Shari Robinson tracked them down, but we did not offer a prize for the second one. So. <laughs> Any questions? Questions for Tom? Looks like none. Thank you. All right. We move on now to committee reports. Um, Kevin, Finance Committee. Finance Committee met tonight uh, immediately prior to this meeting. Uh, primarily housekeeping work, signing, uh, signing warrants and reviewing the appropriation reports. We do have two pieces of good news. One is that the uh, MSMA uh, insurance programs will be refunding to us about $11,000 in over premiums, uh, and that the state has decided to subsidize uh, a bus purchase. Um, we don't know exactly how much that's going to be, but it, it, uh, it certainly will help. That's primarily it. Uh, we've discussed, uh, we've had some general conversation about budgets. And I guess tomorrow night, the council and the uh, school board are meeting, uh, the dinner meeting, and then the general discussion, which uh, I, I'm, I've come to feel is the uh, formal kickoff of the budget season. <laughs> uh, so we will uh, be getting to that tomorrow. And the budget fund will begin shortly. It just gets better every year. Oh, it does. <clears throat> <laughs>
And we have that Saturday session coming up that we look forward to. Always fun. Um, moving on to the uh, policy subcommittee report out. Jennifer. Um, the policy committee met uh, last Wednesday, January 3rd. Um, we've completed reviewing sections A through E of the policy book, um, rewording and finding typos and things like that. <clears throat> Um, and uh, looking to see where we needed policies that we didn't have. Um, and we're in the process of uh, looking into athletics, boosters, and fundraising policy. Okay. Um, and the planning committee, are we? Um, the uh, facilities committee finished up their work um, last week, and actually we finished it up with a public meeting. Um, I will talk more about that when we and talk the about the recommendation from the Facilities Committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, there's no uh, items under unfinished business unless I'm missing something. And so we'll move on to new business and we'll start with the superintendent's uh, recommendation for um, athletic fee positions. So I'd like to recommend the following individuals at the middle school. And they're all, they all are returning coaches. Uh, Joe Doan, indoor track. Jeremy LaRose, indoor track. Chris Brunette, swimming. And Wayne Bridgham, for 7th and 8th grade boys, B team. Okay. Um, we need a motion. Jennifer? I move we um, accept the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions. Okay. And a second, Susan? Um, any questions or comments about these recommendations? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. And um, back to you, Marie, in terms of the uh, Facilities Committee recommendations. Okay. Um, actually, I'd, I'd like to start by reiterating um, the Facilities Committee letter to you um, and the packet that you received um, this week. And with that, the Facilities Committee has, has ended their job of the past year. And early on, um, two very important determinations were made. Um, one being flexible space. There is none. There's a lack of it in our schools. And the second, available um, storage space in each of our schools. Um, flexible space that I keep talking about and talk about in our reports refers to um, the space that we would have in each of our schools in anticipation of one year um, we might need to add an additional classroom or we change our academic, you know, some of the academic programs or the electives that go on in the high school so that we have flexible space to increase or decrease when we need to. Um, those two issues um, surfaced in the very beginning and were the problems that um, we were looking to attack throughout this, this whole committee time. One of the main concerns, as I have mentioned before, was keeping the integrity of our current breakdown of schools. And that was very, very important to this committee. By that, I mean keeping uh, Pond Cove K through 4, the middle school 5 through 8, and high school uh, 9 through 12. As we look back through the years, this conversation um, has been de debated over the years. And decisions in the past, decisions on the renovations that we made, were based on existing space. Um, filling those existing spaces that we had between each of our schools, not necessarily the philosophy of the academics. Um, that's one of the reasons that the kindergarten ended up in the high school in 1992, because it was the only available space that we had within each of our three schools. Um, I have mentioned before that our current student population will be the driving force of some of the changes that we need to make um, in the next couple of years. And as everyone is aware, um, the fifth and the seventh grade classes are the largest that we have had in um, many years. Right now, the middle school is at maximum capacity. 
that will, next year the enrollment numbers will increase again in the middle school. Um, by the town purchasing the Millworks property, that will enable us uh, to meet the, the need for additional classroom space at the middle school. Next year, we'll be able to squeak out um, a classroom, and over the next couple of years, that space should give us a total of four additional classrooms. Um, so we feel that the middle school is pretty well set. Um, when we look at that current seventh grade class, they'll be entering the high school in 2002-2003, um, forcing the need for additional classrooms at the high school as well. Um, in order to provide that space for the high school, this is all a domino effect, in order to provide that space at the high school, the kindergarten um, will need, it needs to be moved. Um, and to accommodate the kindergarten and give the elementary school the much needed space um, that Pine Cove needs, the, fa the facilities committee is recommending adding about 12,905 total square feet of space to the current Pine Cove building, a new, um, spa a, a new space, a new facility, which will be attached to Pine Cove. Um, this space will be large enough to maintain all of the projected enrollments for the elementary school over the next 10 years, while at this point, the facilities committee is not making a recommendation for or against full day kindergarten, which was one of the issues that we had discussed in, in great detail. Um, the additional space at Pine Cove could accommodate additional classrooms um, in the future at, at any point just by adding walls um, to the multi-purpose room spaces that's incorporated within those 12,000 square feet. Um, also, by adding this structure at Pond Cove, we um, would like to see the ability to be able to build up from that structure. Not that it is needed. We don't feel that it's needed within the next 10 years, according to the population um, uh, projections that we have. However, at any point in the future, the dollars are much cheaper now to do it and ensure the future um, enrollments than to come back um, five or six years from now and say that we need more money and, and more space. Um, I'm going to jump back to the, the high school a little. Uh, the way that we teach our kids, I mean, it's no surprise to anyone, the way that, that we teach our children has changed tremendously over the last few years. And in 1969, when the high school was built, the high school was built with, with um, the direction of having a college campus feel to it. Teachers came in, they taught a class, and they left. There were no rooms for specific teachers. There, were no, there was no technology. There was no special education. So our high school functioned very, very differently than it, than it does today. Um, if you look at the sheet that's in your packet on bonded renovation, uh, bonded renovation projects, excuse me, um, the high school was built in 1969 for about $3.8 million. Here we are, 31 years later, and the renovations that are listed on that sheet to the high school consisted of roof repairs, asbestos removal, phone systems, and exterior door replacements. All of that totals less than $800,000. That that, that's the total amount of money that we have put into our high school in the past 31 years. Now, I, I don't mean to say that we haven't done normal maintenance on our um, capital improvement plans every year, because certainly we have, and, and the upkeep of our schools, um, I think we're all proud of. Um, but in the last 31 years, we have spent less than $800,000 in our high school. To give you a very general idea, of what the renovations would include, 
Um, they would be the parking and the drop-off at the front of the high school, roof leaks, ADA compliance, structural pieces, mechanical, plumbing, and electrical, um, adjacent parking to the auditorium and the road alignment, a new gym floor, replay, repair the bleachers, upgrade the science labs, which have not been done for 30 years, um, storage, renovate an unused lecture space, and the reconfiguration of about 9,800 um, square feet of space. In um, the past six years, we have done major renovations to the middle and uh, to the middle school and Pond Cove. In 1994, on that same sheet, you'll see that we spent about 11 and a half million dollars on both of those schools. At that time, when we did those renovations of 11 and a half million dollars, our schools were in such disrepair that what we were doing was restoring and replacing deteriorating roofs, walls, and floors. Basically, what we did was upgrade these structures and made them more energy efficient. What we did get, actually there were four things um, that, that you can look at in both of those buildings as to uh, what we got new in the schools. We got new entrances for both of our schools. We got a new cafetorium, which both schools share. Um, we got a new gym for Pond Cove and new media centers for both schools. So other than those four things, what we were doing was repairing the existing structures for eleven and a half million dollars. If we can like just take a minute and look at the uh, enrollment history and the projection sheet that's in your packet, I have pulled um, an enrollment history back to the mid-70s where enrollment was at its highest peak. The enrollment numbers started to drop in 1980 through the 86-87 school year and then started to pick back up again. In the 70s, we averaged about 2,000 students. In the 80s, we averaged about 1,600. In the 90s, we averaged about 1,850 and our projections for the next 10 years are around 1,700. These projections were done in October by a firm called um, Planning Decisions, a firm out of South Portland. In the book that you received tonight from uh, SMRT, there is a 31-page, um, very detailed report of how these numbers were arrived. So I really stress that everyone read this information because there will be questions as to this population analysis. And th there are questions right now, um, you know, where, where people think that well, these numbers can't be um, high enough. We've had extensive conversation in the facilities committee about this. And um, the, the report is based on trends in economic conditions, residential development, and what that relationship is um, to school enrollments. The change in school enrollments are derived, and this is like just the basic synopsis that, that I can give you of what this report says. Um, the change in school enrollments is derived from two primary sources. Number one, the change in the number of births to Cape Elizabeth residents that can be projected. And number two, um, the net migration of preschool and school age children into the community and out of the community. Um, so this report is based on, also on historical trends and a lot of the information um, was given to them from the town offices of the planning and, and zoning board as well. So that um, new developments are taken into consideration here. How many uh, single family homes Cape Elizabeth over the past 30 years has added each year. So that there are a lot of sources for the information and where this comes from. Um, finally, the two recommendations from the facility committee are for the new kindergarten space and the renovation of the high school. Um, I think at this point, what we are asking for is not luxury, but 
enough space and enough flexible space to get us through the next 10 years. And with all of the things that I had mentioned before, I think we are pretty comfortable feeling that we will have that in each of our individual schools. The total dollars for both of these projects will be between four and five million dollars. If you take a look at the timeline that's included in your packet, um, we are recommending that um, this project go to referendum in the spring of 2002. Construction could begin the following July of 2003, and the kindergarten would be moving into their new space, hopefully by March of 2004. Prior to that, they would be in portables as of 2002 when the high school needs the space. Our current debt service will be reduced by $95,000 in that year um, as the new debt will begin. Also, we are not building at the same time as the town. So the town will be finished with what they are doing and the school um, will then start their projects. Um, this will also, by, by going to um, referendum next spring, this gives us time to get out into the community if this is approved um, by the school board and um, you know, hold meetings with everyone that we can talk to. Um, whether that be every parents association, the Lions Club, the Rotary Club, any organization in this town. And the information that needs to get out is um, simply, you know, what I've stated tonight. So that people are educated and know what they will be voting for. Um, after tonight's discussion, after uh, we talk about this or there are any questions, um, we, we talked about having um, a vote to move forward with this, not tonight, but next month, after everyone has the ability to read the full SMRT report. Um, at that point, once the school board um, takes an official vote, you know, then we would consider moving forward from there. Um, I think that's it. Any questions or discussion? This space could be accessed from the middle school as well as Pine Cove for flexible space, right? Um, I'm sure it could. It is attached to the Pine Cove. On the drawings right now, the preliminary drawings, it is attached to the Pine Cove building. And there is uh, an aisleway, if you call it, between Pine Cove and the middle school. There, there's a picture in your um, oh, book. I thought it went all the way across. No, it doesn't go all the way across because there is um, a walkway. We needed access to get to the entrance doors um, that are in that alcove between the middle school and Pine Cove. Okay. Any other questions? Other questions from the board members? Questions or comments? Kevin. Murray, I want to thank you, members of your committee, for, uh, for a very good and timely job in view of the uh, massive amount of work that had to be looked into. It was nice to see something come back uh, within a reasonable time frame. Uh, I know we'll be talking about this extensively for a long, long time, but, uh, you know, the, the information um, is solid. And uh, it gives us all something to chew on. So again, uh, thank you and congratulations. Other comments, questions? Just um, echoing uh, Kevin's um, statement, uh, it's, it's very clear that this committee has put a lot of thought. Um, they've moved through this in a problem-solving fashion, really kind of looking at the facts and data. Uh, consulting appropriately in terms of the expertise, and um, my congratulations also. Um, I think the, the effectiveness of an overall board or committee really depends on um, individuals assuming uh, leadership and ownership and having a passion 
And um, I think we tapped Marie's passion here because um, she could have given that whole report without any notes. Um, it's, it's amazing. And uh, she's done a, an excellent job of providing leadership. And, um, and again, uh, congratulations. Um, obviously, the board uh, has material in front of them to consider. Um, but there's a level of confidence that I've had all along um, hearing the reports and looking at the process and um, hearing some of the discussions and so on. And, and I suspect uh, other board members are feeling that, that way also. So um, thank you for all of the hard work. Um, and there's more work to come, of course. Um, so thanks uh, for that. And, and congratulations. Obviously, there were a number of people involved um, uh, who spent a good amount of time on this also. Um, and we will have a, there will be a formal vote, so there will be a motion that will be presented to the board in terms of moving um, forward with uh, uh, preparation of a referendum uh, in the amounts and, and the specification of the projects, as Marie talked about. Um, that was the last item on the agenda. And uh, before we adjourn, I would like to uh, just take a look at other dates that are important. Um, next month, um, the uh, finance subcommittee will start at 6.30 on uh, February 13th, um, followed by the regular school board at 7.30 here in the chambers. Uh, the policy subcommittee is planning a meeting on February 7th um, at noontime in the Jordan Conference Room. And Tom, there's also a um, workshop um, for the board. It's a public workshop. Um, the 23rd. On the 23rd at 7 p.m. And why don't you just? Uh, that at the workshop, we will. Um, conduct a preliminary review of the budget in terms of um, new staff requests and new programs. Um, also, it will be an opportunity to have a mid-year mid review of a uh, performance plan of the superintendent. Okay. I have one other meeting, George. Sure. Just a reminder to the members of the co-curricular committee, um, we'll be meeting January 29th, Mary, mm -hmm. 315, Jordan Conference Room. <sighs> So I look forward to okay. yes. <laughs> look, look forward to seeing you all. Um, and uh, with that review of upcoming meetings, uh, that concludes our business for this evening. Thank you very much. Here. Here.